right, we're hearing a lot about wearable computers, particularly ones on the face. Uh, you know, we've seen the Google Glass. Uh, we've been to Meta to see the space glasses and a, a variety of other glasses. But the problem is, uh, how do you make this thing uh, cheaper and smaller and uh, uh, more battery efficient? And Infinity Augmented uh, Reality has an answer to that, and we're going to hear about it right now. Who are you? Hi, my name is Modi Kushner. I am the CEO of Infinity AR. I started this uh, startup two years ago. Prior to that, I was the chief marketing officer of Telmap. We sold the company to Intel about two years ago. And what I'm doing is I'm truly, I'm trying to help my boy play more realistic video games. That's <laughs> what I'm doing here. Well, that's a good way to be cool, Dad. <laughs> yeah, you know, I was playing, it, the old startup started two years ago. We were playing chess, okay, and then his friend, classmate, entered the house and said, would you like to play Wii? The boy looked at me, looked at his friend, dropped me and went to play Wii. And I was staring at him and thinking to myself, 30 years ago, I got my first Atari, and I was playing with my friend, staring at the screen, detached from the environment. What's wrong here? Can we do something new? And that was the idea. How can we allow those two boys interact like we did, right, on a board game, but with the excitement of the video game? Yeah. Now, you're building the engine or the glasses or both? Okay, so we are building the engine. Okay. We will require some hardware, of course, but unlike all the other solutions that you have today in the market that require huge battery and can last for, I don't know, maybe 15 uh, minutes, we're requiring only 2D stereoscopia cameras. And with that, we can build the 3D environment around you. We know where you are at all time. We allow you to control virtual objects, but more than that, we are the engine that kind of translates the physical world into your virtual world. So if you are an Infinity developer, you, uh, a Unity developer, you will need Infinity in order to build or to extract the data from the physical world. Yeah, so you need a pair of glasses that has two video cameras, just standard video cameras, right? Two simple VGA, one color, one black and white. They can build all of this magic. So the people who are uh, angry at Google for putting a camera on Google Glass with, with privacy, they're really going to love you because you have two cameras, right? <laughs> I, I think Google took it one step too fast, okay, right? If you look at what we really, when you have new products like that, you don't put it immediately on the street and allow people to do face recognition, right? Let's start with some fun. Let's have two boys sitting at home and playing uh, Monopoly or chess or even new interactions you cannot imagine. You know, we have a demo in our office that you can play Angry Birds, okay, that we built, but from the point of view of the bird. Yeah. Think about it, you are now feeling as if you are flying towards the islands or it's amazing new experience that you can uh, get, so. So I'm still a little confused. Are you gonna build glasses? Could I, or, we, or do you work with an existing uh, person? We are, we are working with an existing company. Our demo is running currently on Vuzix because they are the one to first provide stereoscopic uh, cameras. But we are now talking to different uh, providers of glasses. When we told them about our ideas, they were admitted, you know, start scratching their heads and said, how come we didn't thought about it, right? It sounds easy, it's not that easy to support all the computation and the right you know, smart algorithm behind it. Uh, but the truth, they much prefer to have additional camera on top of the glasses instead of you know, a 3D sensor. Which yeah. And a 3D sensor has, uh, the Meta space glasses that I saw have, have a, a front-facing 3D sensor, but it can only see about 15 feet away from you, right? Uh, the 3D uh, sensor throws light, uh, laser yeah. light or uh, ultraviolet light, and uh, measures the time it takes to get back and builds a 3D model. Your approach can go much further uh, and, and can work in bright sunlight, I would uh, assume. Right, so you got few of the points, which means, okay. truly, we can work outside because infrared light will not interfere. We can work one against each other, right? Face to face, because we are passive sensors, no, but nothing will interfere. As for the distance, the truth is, as a human, you cannot tell the depth beyond six meters. I can replace what everything is behind six meters with a poster, you will never know. It's your brain playing with you. 
for the truth. Which is thing. actually a trick that Hollywood uses all exactly. the time. They paint things behind uh, the actors exactly. and you can't tell because yeah. your eye can't see that. The thing. rule is that you can uh, sense depth 100 times, uh, double the uh, length between your eyes. Okay, so if, 100 times. Right, if this is six centimeters, you can s sense depth up to six meters. Now, if you look at the depth sensor, they're trying to generate depth out of every pixel. I couldn't care less. That's what's smart about us. When you look at the table, yes, I want to give you depth for every pixel. When you look at the distance, I don't care. Interesting. Right? You will not feel it as well. And that's how you can save computation and power. and th That's how it should work. When I went to uh, Meta, they had a team of people developing software to build a new a new user interface, a new machine uh, computer interface, or a new uh, machine human interface, right? Because we don't have a mouse on the table like we exactly. used to have. Now we have our hands in the air and, and we have sensors that can tell we're spinning our head and stuff like that. Uh, are, are you building that new operating system that's going to let us do things with our hands? Yeah, I think what we currently see in the market is trying to take gestures into the 3D environment, okay? So you will see actions that will tell you to hold, grab, move, release. I don't do it with my physical things, right? If I want to grab a glass, I will just grab it and take it. So the next generation of gestures, we don't like to call it gesture, we call it hand control. Hand control. Right, so I, that's the way I control stuff. I don't need to teach my little boy how to grab a chess Piece. piece, right? I can just take it, grab it. So uh, we are now working on a technology that allows your brain to understand that you catch this piece by lightning and have some signal of uh, voice. But at the end, we need to recognize that you just capture a piece, right? And you yeah. want to grab it and move it or leave it. That's the idea. Between but that's behind. a lot of computer science, isn't it? That's a lot of computer science. My uh, CTO is a graduate of a project in Israel called Talpiot, which every year they select the 30 most talented guys, put them through university. So this guy did three degrees in parallel, math, physics, computer science. It wasn't enough for him, so he did his master and PhD in parallel to working in a military factory that design uh, navigation for unmanned aircraft wow. using computer vision. So. So he's a smart guy. Extremely smart. <laughs> extremely smart. So, uh, you know, I had this idea and I started, keep looking for those kind of guys, okay? And I interviewed some of them, okay? And most of them told me, impossible, impossible. And then this guy, his, I liked his answer the most. He told me, give me a week, okay? And he called me after a week and said, I already drafted the, the sketch and how can I do that? And, Ever since you know how it is in the startup, we are kind of a married guy. How soon is it going to be before we can buy this uh, and um, play with it at home? I think there are a mixture of things that need to be mature. So you need the optics, right? You need the content, and you need the, our technology. So I think that uh, at the beginning of next year, you will start to see uh, companies working with different technologies to embed them in their glasses. So I guess something at the beginning of 2016, mid-2016, we will start to see those kind of solutions. I, you know, it's a question whether it will be first for the enterprise industry or for consumer. I think enterprise will adopt it first. Do you see other places where this technology might be useful, for instance, controlling a, a dashboard in a car? Uh, think about a, a surgeon, okay? Uh, those guys are spending more than 25% of their time in the, in the room looking at data instead of operating. So if you have a very complex operation to do, it might take six, eight hours. Think about it, 25% of the time is looking through data to understand what to do. Think if the doctor can now have those glasses on top of him and the entire uh, information will lie over the the patient, right? So you can now look at different slices of the MRI and so on. So I think it will go over there. What, you know, I've been visiting Tel Aviv all week and we're here in the uh, Mobley offices. Uh, thank you, Mobley, for letting us uh, do interviews here. Why are, th what's going on here? Because there, there's more startups here who are doing this kind of hard 
science, R&D. What, why is that, it happening here? Yeah, what, what's going on here? What's in the water here that, that makes you different than New York uh, or Berlin or uh, uh, Los Angeles or Seattle, uh, right? I'll give you what I think happens here, okay? You are joining the army. Uh, they put in front of you a task and tell you, listen, we don't need to replicate it. It must be on time. Think out of the box. No budgets, limitation. Just try to build it, okay? And you build it. You think out of the box. Uh, you get the solution right, and you move to the next project, right? So if you look at it, we don't have skills of building huge manufacturers or d because we are extremely focused on, you know, uh, having one project, unlimited budget, let's do that. And also it's something with the Israeli culture, if you think something, I know how to do it better. <laughs> yeah. um, what's your business challenge now for the next two years to build this? I think the, the biggest challenge will be to hire the right personnel. Uh, you can't build this kind of startup unless you have the sharpest minds. So uh, I think that's one point. And the other point is to convince the, you know, the industry that that's the right solution. Yeah. take it forward. So you're probably raising funding. Have you raised any funding for this yeah, company? Yeah, uh, we raised two and a half million dollars uh, in April from Singularity, which hosts us here in additional uh, fund in the US. And uh, it will help us to develop the proof of concept of the technology and hopefully we'll mature it. Very cool. Well, thank you for uh, giving me a little taste of what's uh, going on here in Tel Aviv. Um, where do we learn more about it? Uh, we where can we, where you can, we can visit it? our website at infinityar.com. Yeah, everything in there, our web, uh, Facebook page. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Thanks for the pleasure.